Club, the author of It's Okay to Leave the Plantation, the New Underground Railroad, Mason Weaver. Mason, great to have you with Thank us you, again. We talked about your personal testimony when you were with us earlier, but I want to talk about this book. The title alone is uh, very... Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of response to this. It's okay to leave the plantation. What do you mean by that? Well, first off, let me tell you what I don't mean. I don't mean black people in the slave system. I believe that we're all now under a plantation. Uh, if, if we understand that, that freedom and slavery existed since God made Adam and Eve, and that what makes you free has always been in existence, and what makes you a slave has always been in existence. Today in America, we're all dependent upon our government, and other people for social programs that is keeping us enslaved as a people. So God's people now cannot act as God's people because we're so dependent upon the master to take care of us, provide for us, take care of our children. And today there is nothing that the audience do today. There's no activity that they engage in that doesn't require a government permission, fee, tax, or authority. So this isn't really just a concept that applies to the black community. This is really anybody who allows themselves to be put in what you call the plantation system. You know, it started off as a young Berkeley student, degree in political science and degree in black history. It started about my search for why did black people end up in America as slaves? Because I knew the African history of North Africa. I knew that the armies of, of Rome and other countries could not invade. I, I knew that that the uh, Spaniards saw all the gold in Africa, but 50 years later they came to South America instead of 500 miles away in Africa. Something happened. And what I realized was that God is consistent. Terry, he, he is consistent in history. What he will accept, he will always accept. And what God will not tolerate, he will never tolerate. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've learned in Judges chapter 2 through chapter 6, you look at those people, look at the Israelis. Whenever they turn their back from God, yeah. they would enter slavery. And they turned their back back to God, their faces back to God, they came out of slavery, praised his name. In America, we were brought over here worshiping false and useless gods. We, we remained slaves for hundreds of years until we began to call on the name of the Lord. And a Christian movement began in America, the abolitionists, and freedom came and black folks like the Israelis walked out of slavery praising God. Now as a nation and as a race, we're turning back to those false and useless gods. And our community and our culture is going back into bondage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk, well, certainly with an election recently uh, gone by, about what the role of government is in people's lives. In fact, I, I, the other day I was traveling somewhere out of town. I saw a great big billboard about two people who did a, a talk show together on radio. And it said, the conservative and the compassionate. Each one had their own label. But, <laughs> but we, that's a misperception, isn't it? Why, why do we have that? Well, because we are misled by the evil one. Uh, we allow the, the enemy to control the, the press and the media and what is the perception of who we are and, and what free us. The fact is that no one is free in America without economic freedom. And so you cannot be dependent on someone else and, and still maintain your own individual freedom. So what we have to understand in, in America is that the, the true value, the true culture is dependent upon a strong family, not a strong government. There are no cultural programs that's ever worked no social program has ever been successful. But Mason, if you've grown up in a home where the dad was absent, where the family's falling apart, where the government has been the only one that stepped in to give you day-to-day -day sustenance, how do you break that cycle and say to someone, you're still living in slavery and in bondage, there's a, there's a fresh way over here? Well, first off, if you, if you understand the mentality of a slave, once you bring the notice of freedom to them, they will understand it themselves. We don't have to worry about uh, the dependency, the abusive family, the, the, the child being misused, because folks, no matter what that problem is, no matter if, if it's racism, if it's a drunk mother, a beaten up dad, a kids on drugs, th those problems are irrelevant. The fact is that we as people have to understand that we serve a living God and turn back to that God, not allow government to control our lives. Right now, as, as a black man, I, I've been told that black Americans, African Americans, I'm not African by the way, I know that if I go to Africa, they would not call me an African American African. Huh. I'm an American. But as, as a black man in America, I've been told all the reasons I should hate America and all the reasons why I should have special gifts and government programs and all these special things, but black Americans, in spite of 200 years of slavery and racism and Jim Crow laws and, and legalized beating and lynching, black Americans are the richest, the most powerful, the best educated, the most influential black folks on this planet, by far, because we worship God. 
So you look at the problems. The white man didn't call slavery. God called slavery because black folks in Africa were rebelling against God. And black folks stayed slaves in America until we turned back to God. That accounts for white people, black people, Jewish people. It is God's history. It's God's consistent history. You serve him, you're enslaved. You have enslaved. some strong feelings about liberalism and, and yes. the place that it's played, particularly in the black community, but for any who fall under that whole plantation mentality. Talk about that a little bit. When I was a Berkeley student, I kept hearing the professor say that liberals were for the poor and conservatives were for the rich. And I'm thinking, which one do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> you know, I'm paying my way to Berkeley. And I realized then, I saw looking and noticing that liberals manage poverty. They know, Terry, that if you put poor people together in one community, you are guaranteed to, to produce more poverty, drugs, teen pregnancies, low self-esteem, bad schools, but you're also guaranteed to breed more Democratic voters. You will never see a poor neighborhood in America ever vote a Republican. The poorer it is, the more liberals have control over it. So I'm thinking as a young college student that, that do I want to support a better slave master a more compassionate slave master, or don't want to support freedom. Yeah, but Mason, I I feel like there is a um, a sense in especially in the black community of of um, suspicion over the motives of of conservatives of conservative programs of in government. Suspicion. How do you overcome that? Well, the suspicion first, I don't have to overcome it. Master has told the slaves, to "Watch out for those doggone Yankees. Watch out for those freedom fighters. Watch out for the very idea of freedom is negative." Master has said the very notion, look at, look at the vice president during the campaign. He stood there before the American people and promised them, promise, if you vote for me, I promise to take more social security from you and to not <laughs> let you have it yourself. He promised more slavery. And the slaves thinking, you know, I need to, to, to support the best master. Mm -hmm. So master is telling black people and poor people and abused women and homosexuals and all the groups that they are better off, that he's, he's going to manage their lives better. But the old Underground Railroad, had a system. Master was saying freedom was bad, but that Underground Railroad sent those escaped slaves back to their own plantation to knock on the door and said, Master is lying to you about freedom. It's mm -hmm. real. I've been there. We're going to take you there. Yeah. What reaction do you get from the black community to your book and to your ideas, to the speeches that you make? Well, the black leaders don't seem to like me. I don't understand why. Uh, maybe because I don't believe in black leaders. I believe that you know you can't name any white leaders, so why do we need black leaders? I'm, I'm not some kind of a dangerous species that has to be managed. I'm, I'm not a sheep. So the leaders who get their money and power by managing the slaves don't appreciate what I've said. But the people who are looking for freedom yeah. understand mm -hmm. that I am talking about real freedom. And those that will follow will follow. Those who will not will stay a slave. My job is to tell the truth and go home. You think you'll see the things change that need to be changed societally in your lifetime? I've already seen some tremendous changes. Right now, the, the thrust for freedom is so great in America now that I don't think it can be stopped. Well, that's a good word. It's Okay to Leave the Plantation is the name of the book, and if you'd like to find out how you can get a hold of it, log on to our website, and we have a web link there that will take you to a site where you can get a hold of the book. It's a fascinating book. It's well thought out, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Mason Weaver, thank you so much for My being with us today. The Lord thank bless you. you. <laughs>
are still God's people. Uh, the racial problems in America will go away, not when we become a colorblind society, but when we stop being blinded by our color. 